Hi guys, uh, my name's Lindsay. I'm here to introduce the chapel class to you guys. <laughs> um, our class meets during third hour on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Uh, this, this year we're a group of sophomores, juniors, and seniors. And then we <laughs> and we also have four teachers that all help to lead the class together. Uh, right now, all the chapels through the month of September are planned. So in our chapel class, we've been studying worship, what worship means to us, and trying to come up with what we see as ideal chapels for the future. If you want to be involved in chapel this year or have any ideas for chapel, there are going to be sign-up sheets and a place to put suggestions in Mr. Borstrom, or you can talk to any one of us about the ideas you may have. We're super excited for the chapels we'll, we'll be planning this year and hope you're just as excited to come to chapel every week. And so now Mr. Borst is going to lead us in prayers to the world. Thanks, guys. For prayers to the world, the chapel class thought um, at some point we should try to address um, the, um, the seeming rise in racial tension in this country over the summer again. And I think if you look worldwide, it, it, there's a similar rise, um, uh, very disturbing. Uh, Europe is going through it. Uh, you can see it in other pockets of the world. Um, and. Uh, I just wanted to give, have two thoughts on it, uh, and, and so here are the two thoughts. Uh, one is, um, uh, I was reading a book that noted that in the civil rights movements in the 1960s, there were kind of two groups of leaders. One were the northern leaders who were really positive, and, and they thought they had, uh, they, they had washed themselves of raci racism, and, and these were enlightened, smart, rational people. Who, who acted uh, on the principles that our nation was founded on. And they thought that since they were, had gotten here, uh, the rest of the nation was gonna eventually uh, advance to their uh, more enlightened level. Um, the other part of the, uh, uh, of the civil rights movement um, was, uh, was Southern uh, biblically based Christians uh, who King represented uh, maybe best of all. And um, the author said that they came out of a like a prophet tradition from the Old Testament. And they knew that there was no group of people that was perfectly enlightened and that we were all sinners and we all struggle. And so this second group uh, approached things as, listen, we got to make the changes we can. We got to change some laws and then we got to keep fighting in it. And this is going to be a, a, a something that humans just have to keep fighting. Uh, King said this, a uh, particularly good quote, he said the particular sort of optimism uh, that the Northerners had uh, uh, has been discredited by the brutal logic of events. Instead uh, of assured progress in wisdom and decency, humans face the ever-present possibility of a swift relapse, not merely into an animal uh, or animalism, like animal-like behavior, but into such calculated cruelty that no other animal on this planet can practice. Um, that's around the corner for all of us. The second thought I, I thought I'd, I'd think about uh, um, uh, before we pray is um, uh, one commentator was looking at the American political system and he noted how many politicians seem to operate on, on, on tweaking our fear. Some do it really bluntly, others do it really subtly, but they, they play on our fears. And if we allow them to do this, we kind of start to fall into this animalism that is just around the corner for all of us. And then he said, compare the politicians that are all vying for president right now with a guy who's gonna visit this country at the end of this month, um, uh, Pope Francis, who does not try to play on our fears, but tries to ri raise us to what our hopes can be. And he has the courage to go there. And he has the courage to go there against much of the administration that is surrounding him in the Vatican. And uh, many people within the church that are frustrated with him. And yet he does it with a purity of vision and a goodness of heart that we can look at and we can thank God for. So in my prayer, I'd like to um, think about uh, the dangers we all face and the hopes that we can achieve. Would you pray with me? Our Heavenly Father, 
you have made this world good and rich and beautiful um, and you have placed us in it with a certain responsibility to reflect that goodness. Keep us from our fears. Uh, keep us from uh, falling into uh, meanness and animalism and cruelty. Um, Lord, we thank you for the image of Pope Francis, uh, for the courage he has. Please give us equal courage to be good-natured to others while seeking yet justice, to be honest and true, and to try to reflect the love that your son had when he came here to be among us. This we all pray in your name. Amen. I'd like to read our theme verse. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as you have been taught, abounding in with thanksgiving. Thanks, Heavenly. Um, my name is Mark Kuyper, and I want to talk to you today a little bit about being rooted. Um, that's a root right there. Um, and I'll talk more about that in a minute. Can you show the first slide, please? That's, um, I want to talk a little bit about uh, a few things, and I want to start with a few examples from my life. Um, I've been attacked three times in my life that I can count as a child. And the first attack was by a possum. Um, that was laying in our street, my friend Craig Kennedy and I got sticks and started poking at it. And um, its its eyes opened and it started twitching. And, and at that moment, I realized that possums play dead. I had no idea that they did that. Um, and, it, and it chased me and Craig up his driveway and onto his front porch. Uh, chase is a, it's probably a strong word. It kind of more strolled up the driveway and then went into the woods. But I still felt like it was, I was being chased. Second, yeah, um, I'm deathly afraid of raccoons, um, and I think this is rooted in an experience that I had with my father camping. Um, I was eating a hot dog underneath um, some trees and by a campfire, and um, I remember this raccoon just flying out of the air onto my shoes, and um, my dad ran over and chased it away, and he explained that it wasn't really attacking me. It was just after my food and it just fell out of the tree because it was uh, smelling my food. But I still count that as an attack. <laughs> the third, yeah, the, the third was um, a cat. And uh, it happened when I was a kid visiting my aunt in Detroit. She had a uh, chihuahua and three cats. Um, I was sitting alone on her couch and watching television, and I got in a staring contest with one of her cats. It was on the floor. I didn't really mean to stare at it, but it just kept staring at me, so I stared back. And um, I didn't realize if you look at an animal long enough, it, it can, it, it, I don't know, it can hurt you, I guess, or um, I guess it smells fear or whatever. Um, and so I was sitting there and um, staring, and it, leapt off the, the ground and, and onto my face. Um, I started screaming. My aunt came over, and she took it off my, my face. Um, and then she just laughed, and she said, oh, it just wanted attention. It just wanted to be petted. But um, most people don't pet things that are attached to their face. <laughs> I don't know. Based on those experiences, I st still don't like cats, even though in According to uh, social media, I should. I mean, they're all over the place. Um, and I still fear raccoons, possums are a non-issue because I don't uh, think I've seen one since I was a kid. In all seriousness, those fears are easy to talk about because their roots are shallow. However, there are roots in my life, and I would guess in yours, that run much deeper and that we often don't acknowledge or recognize, let alone talk about. Today, I just want to spend a few moments talking about some of the roots that have had an impact on my life. The root of fear, it's a big one. It's a big one for a lot of people. Mr. Bors pointed it out. It's from politics to natural disaster to crime. The list goes on. In a recent survey, people your age uh, in a psychological magazine, the number one fear among high school people seems to be the fear of being alone. 
followed by the fear of being bullied or standing out in the crowd. All right, I can see that. But for me and maybe others, I have lived much of my life in fear. And while the bigger fears of this world certainly affect me, it's the more personal fears that have had the greatest impact. Like the fear that whatever is good in my life will eventually turn bad. The fear that people won't like me for who I am. The fear that my life in the end isn't important and that I didn't make a difference. Those are real. And based on that fear, often what rises to the surface is that I, and perhaps you, try too hard to be liked by people who, for whatever reason, just won't like me back. Because I fear loss so greatly, I tend to control people and situations, but the more you control people, the more you start losing them. It's a crazy cycle. I wish I could stop it. But from hearing people's stories, I don't think I'm alone. And then there's the root of insecurity or unworthiness. It's another deeply planted root in me, and maybe you, that I have to prove my worth and my value to people, that I'm not good enough in some way, not worthy of being loved, of being known, and that somehow have to measure up to what? I don't really know, but it's deep inside me, like a long root buried beneath the ground. And what often surfaces, again, is a life filled with a superficial, settling for meaningless, cheap relationship, ships, excuse me, constantly seeking the approval of others, rarely standing up for anything that is good like justice or wrongdoing or value because we are scared to death of disappointing others even if those others don't value us at all. Those are just a few examples that affect me. And here's a question. What are some of the roots in your life that get in the way of living the life that you were meant to live. Paul writes, be rooted in Christ. But much like the people he was writing to, we have a tendency to forget who we are and cling to the roots that rob us of our true identity. Our true identity is in Christ. And I know many of you have heard that a million times. But before all of what I can say to you, you have to recognize that that is the truth of who we are. Because we live in a world that consumes us with all of its roots, so it's crucial to hear it, even if you've heard it before, and to live out of it. We need to be reminded that when we claim Jesus as Lord, we belong to him. He is the source of all that is good and beautiful and growing in our life. And when we recognize our identity in him, everything changes. Will the roots of fear, insecurity, and unworthiness completely be uprooted in my life? No, they probably won't. But they no longer define me. I'm not ashamed of them anymore. Those roots have given me the opportunity to see people that I can love and forgive freely, even if I'm not sure they're going to love me back. Those roots have made me recognize that being liked is overrated. My family seems to like me most of the time, and I have some great friends who truly love me and call me and remind me to who I am. And the roots are, those roots are now, in some ways, a way that I can see empathy, feel it in you, the people that struggle with perhaps some of the very things that I do. Last week, um, if I could point your attention to that root, um, I dug that out of my neighbor's yard. And um, it, I'll be honest, it was a tree before. And, um, but I, I just went in his backyard and cut it off. And um, he had a bunch of these trees that were in his backyard. And so I knew I needed kind of a visual example. So. I, sometimes a landscape in the summer, and if you, in, in most of the time when people dig stumps out, they either like put something in them to, you know, make them, like they put dynamite or something. I mean, that's they do that sometimes. Um, and, and and sometimes they just dig out the roots without even, you know, they don't dig the whole root out. They just cut them, and then they just, they just pull out the stump. But I I intentionally tried to to actually show as many roots as possible, and and. It took me about two and a half hours. And it was a really small tree, actually. So if, if you look, um, I'm just going to go like this. Can you hear me? 
Okay. It, this is the this is the part that I cut off with the tree. These are the roots. And this this is the tap root. So see that big you see that big thing back there? Okay. It's 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 almost like it's half the 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 width of the tree. I, I cut out, I, I pulled out all of those other roots, but the tap root, I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't cut out. I mean, I couldn't pull out, so I had to, I had to cut it out. Um, and, I, and I think that's a lot like our faith. I think that's a lot like where we are in relationship to God. So I pulled it out, and I carried it home, and I washed all the dirt out of it, and, um, and I set it in the sun to dry. And here's the thing. I think we need to do a better job of really looking deeply. Like I spent the time doing this. I think we need to do a better job of really spending the time and looking deeply into our lives. I don't think we spend near enough time really looking deeply into our lives and seeing what we're about and where our identity is. And I think it's important to surround ourselves with people who remind us, like the song, of, of who we are. Not in a judgmental way, because we know that there are a lot of people that do that, but out of love for who you are and who you're becoming. I think we settle way too easy for shallow relationships because it's just easier, but that's for another conversation. But being, being rooted in Christ means we have a responsibility. In your own way, are you a reminder that you're connected to the taproot of life? a root that was established since the beginning of time for all people. My encouragement for all of us, including me, is to look deeper into people's lives. Listen to their stories. Live a life and, live a, live and love a life that is deeper. There are so many people out here in this audience, myself included, some have beautiful roots, and yet on the surface, perhaps they're shy, perhaps they're different, perhaps they go unnoticed, and their story is never told because we just simply look at the surface. Some of you might have roots that are caused by your past that you might, I don't know, you might regret, you might not, but your roots aren't all that great, just like mine, and we have a tendency just to kind of judge people based on that without looking at all of the other things in their life that are beautiful and good. And I'm just simply asking us, well, God, in fact, is asking us to live deeply and to love deeply just as he has loved us. Can you pray with me? God, we, we thank you that you are our, our root of life. We thank you, God, that when you are Lord of our life, that you have, are now rooted in us. We ask, God, that you may please um, help us to recognize that in ourselves. We ask, God, that we may recognize those things in our life that just cause us to be tangled up inside and ask that we may recognize those things that are allowing us not to become the people that you have created us to become. We ask, God, that your love may be so strong in our life that we may see other people for how you created them to be. Allow us through you to hear their stories, to look at their roots, to look deeply and to love deeply, just as you have loved us. God, this all comes from you. Anything good that we do, anything beautiful we do is from you. So it is in you that we ask. In Jesus' name we pray.